Good morning, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us today uh, here in the room in sunny Frankfurt and also for the people joining online. My name is Irene Hinskerk. I'm heading the Climate Change Center at the ECB, and I have the pleasure of opening this session and moderating the first uh, part of the whole workshop today, uh, where we will be discussing the insurance protection gap and the policy options to also reduce it and solve it. Last week, the World Meteorological Organization sent out a warning message that we will likely already breach the 1.5 degrees in the next five years, so before 2027, on a temporary basis and with an increased frequency. Also, the last couple of days, we witnessed the heavy rain, catastrophic floods and landslides in Italy. It's the worst uh, flood in Italy in 100 years and it leaves thousands of people homeless. This also comes a bit later with the question, who's gonna pay for the damage that, will, that occurred there and how can we uh, solve it and what part of that is insured? So the topic that we are discussing today is just so topical. And therefore I'm really pleased that we have a very good lineup of speakers today with us. Um, to discuss, discuss this important topic and to also learn from each other and think about solutions. How can we solve this insurance protection gap? Before we start, please be aware that the event will be recorded and the recording will be shared at the ECB and IOPA websites. Now, let me move to the program. Our first speaker today, and I'm really pleased to welcome him, is the Vice President of the ECB, Mr. De Guindes. Dear Vice President, a warm welcome to you. And thank you so much for being here today and opening, uh, providing the opening remarks for these workshops. Well, thank you very much, uh, Irene. Good morning to everyone. It's a pleasure to, to, to be here today to open this workshop huh? and uh, you know, to be dedicated to the, to the insurance uh, gap. Well, as you know, climate change is increasingly threatening our economy and financial system. Combating that threat involves, first and foremost, swift and ambitious mitigation policies to reduce emissions and sustain the transition to a net zero economy. The ECB is determined to play its part and contribute within our mandate as we have set out in our climate agenda. But meeting the challenge of climate change also requires us to confront the risks from climate related catastrophes that already exist and that are expected to intensify in the near future. So it gives me great pleasure to welcome you to this joint ECB IOPA workshop. Our two institutions have maintained an excellent collaboration on the climate insurance protection gap for several years. Our joint research has already demonstrated how insurance mitigates the macroeconomic and welfare effects of catastrophes and how climate change and insurance coverage interact. And we recently published a joint discussion paper setting out a range of policy options to tackle the climate insurance protection gap, which is the focus of this workshop. That focus is timely, given the macroeconomic impact of recent extreme weather and climate events. Devastating floods hit northern Italy, as Irene has indicated last week, and hit parts of Europe in the summer of 2021. The continent-wide drought last year was the worst for 500 years. It heavily affected agricultural production, constrained transport and on several major rivers, and reduced hydroelectric power generation by nearly a fifth, exacerbating the energy crisis. Insurance undoubtedly plays a valuable macroeconomic and societal role following catastrophes. Payouts from insurance reduce uncertainty and support the investment for the construction, accelerating the recovery. Insurance schemes also incentivize policyholders to reduce risks and enact adaptation measures. As climate change causes catastrophes to become more frequent and more severe, the value of insurance to society clearly increases. Yet, the European Union has a substantial insurance protection gap. Only a quarter of the losses caused by extreme weather and climate-related events are currently insured, and in several countries this share is below 5%. Moreover, climate, ch climate change is expected to cause this protection gap to widen. Lower coverage could further increase the burden on governments, both in terms of macroeconomic risks 
and fiscal spending to cover and insure damages, potentially posing risks for debt sustainability. A widening insurance protection gap may also pose risks for financial stability. Physical damage to uninsured assets can reduce collateral values and lead to repricing of loans and securities for exposed financial institutions. Catastrophes can also disrupt supply chains, exacerbating the impact on the real economy and on financial institutions' balance sheets. These effects can lower credit provision and high risk on, in high-risk areas. As will be elaborated further in the opening session, the policy options set out in the discussion paper focus on fostering insurance coverage on a range of levels. Insurers should design their policies to encourage households and firms to reduce risk. For example, by granting discounts for implementing effective mitigation or adaptation measures. Greater use of, cat of catastrophe bonds could support the overall supply of insurance by passing on part of the risk to capital market investors. In the same vein, governments could set up public-private partnerships and backstops to partly cover the costs that insurers may incur from major disasters. Existing EU examples of such partnerships include the Consortio de Compensación de Seguros in Spain and the Caisse Centrale de Réassurance in France. Finally, an EU-wide public scheme could complement national-level insurance schemes. The EU scheme could help ensure sufficient funds are made available to European countries for the construction following rarer but larger catastrophes. These policy options complement wider financial sector policy initiatives. Regarding the banking sector, a lack of insurance may prevent some property qualifying as collateral, potentially triggering higher capital needs and weighing on credit supply. Targeted macroprudential regulations may therefore be needed to enhance the resilience of banks against a persistent protection gap, accelerating the EU's capital markets union and sustainable finance agendas can help mobilize private funding to reduce the climate insurance protection gap. Deeper, more liquid, and more integrated EU capital markets can enlarge the universe of investors in green projects and financial products, including catastrophe bonds. The aim of our joint discussion paper is to solicit feedback and promote debate on the principles, framework, and possible policy actions set out. Today's workshop provides a further forum to exchange ideas. I would like to thank the diverse range of excellent panelists and participants who are joining us today. We look forward to hearing from, from your, your contributions and maintaining an ongoing dialogue as we pursue further work on this very important topic. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Vice President De Guindos, for this excellent opening remarks and setting the scene and emphasizing the urgency as well and the impact on financial stability also on the economy at, at large and also what we can already uh, maybe think of solutions of solving this. And also emphasizing the excellent collaboration we had on this work together with IOPA. And this bridge brings me to introducing the next uh, uh, speaker of today, that is Chairperson Petra Hilkman from IOPA. Uh, she will be bringing the insight from IOPA. Petra, please, the floor is yours. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Irene, and uh, thank you, uh, Vice President De Kindos. Thank you to all the ECB colleagues for a warm welcome uh, for hosting this joint ecb aopa workshop uh, on policy options to reduce the climate insurance protection gap. And thank you, of course, to the team in ECB and AOPA that have been working on these policy options and the reports, as well as this workshop uh, uh, for, for a while, with, I think, uh, an, an interesting result that we really need to discuss um, it was a pleasure to collaborate um, because by working together, we can improve an overall understanding of the climate insurance protection gap, as well as promote policy options for a more sustainable and resilient future. We believe that only discussing and exchanging views with a broad group of stakeholders will help. So that includes not only supervisors and central bankers, but also industry, NGOs and academia. Um, and that's where you come all in. And we hope to identify solutions together to uh, 
uh, solutions that are sustainable, that are fair, but that are also implementable. Because I think we really need to also be able to, to not just talk, but act. And it's therefore heartening to see that so many of you are joining these events, both in person as well as online. And it is my pleasure to be here with you this morning. Now, some general words on, on climate change. A lot has been said. It's, it's a global challenge posing material risks to society and the economy uh, and to the transition um, uh, that we need to do. But we need to do it and we need to do it urgently. The consequences of climate change are becoming more and more transparent. And unfortunately, uh, though I like to give concrete examples when I talk, unfortunately, I am able to, every time I talk about this topic, give a new example. Uh, already the recent flooding in Italy was mentioned, but only in the last two weeks I visited Spain, where the early, very hot spring and therefore drought is a concern. And after that, of course, the weather system that caused trouble in Italy first uh, went over Croatia, also there, uh, resulting in tremendous flooding. And so in this regard, uh, when it comes to these damages and, and when it comes to these, these developments that are just happening as we speak, uh, IOPA and ECB share a common mission, prevention and mitigation of systemic risk and preservation of financial stability. IOPA and ECB have therefore been working together on a range of topics, including stress testing. Climate change is a particular example of a cross-sectoral risks where cooperation between our institutions is essential. And our ongoing work on, for example, nature-related risks um, draws from expertise and data on both institutions. Moreover, we will also work together closely to respond to the request from the European Commission jointly with the other two ASAs, ESMA and EBA, as well as the ESRB, to do a cross-sector analysis assessing the financial system's resilience to stress in the transition to the EU's 2030 goals for the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Moreover, at AOPA, we have the ambition um, to have, uh, we have a very ambitious sustainable finance strategy, and we've always underlined the vital role that insurance companies will play and will have to play in a green transition and in mitigating the economic impact of climate change. First of all, they're important long-term investors, and so they can support the transition uh, to a more sustainable and resilient economy through their investments, through stewardship. But second, and here insurance within the financial industry is more unique, they are also the risk managers of society. And so they are called upon to support consumers, to, consult, to support firms, to support governments against losses that follow from extreme weather events through their underwriting. And this includes also raising awareness, incentivizing climate-related risk prevention and adaptation, as well as by swiftly providing the necessary funds when there is an impact. However, thirdly, we should not forget that also insurance itself will be impacted by transition risk uh, and by the increase in risk that we also all see. And so therefore, IOPA also considers it essential to understand the potential impact of climate change on the sector itself. And in recent years, we have monitored both transition and physical risk and published uh, several studies on this that you can find on our website, aiming to identify material exposures and assessing potential impact on the insurance sector. Now, when it comes to assess, uh, uh, really impact on, on our society, let's talk about this protection gap. And for given the importance of the insurance sector, it is essential that this sector also continues to offer financial protection against the consequences of net cat risks. What we now see, the number was already mentioned, but let's say it again, only one fourth, so only 25% of net cat losses is insured. And that shows a significant protection gap that is already existing. Insurability, affordability of climate-related risk is becoming a critical concern for insurers, for society, for policymakers, and if no countermeasures are taken, it is expected to widen. We therefore need to address the insurance protection gap by proposing not only, but also finding and implementing solutions. And this is an important part of our financial uh, and sustainable finance strategy. IOPA's work aims at contributing, first of all, in improving the risk assessment. 
risk prevention and adaptation measures then can follow. And in this context, we have developed a dashboard of insurance protection gaps um, that is focused on identifying the key drivers and improving risk awareness. This dashboard is available on our website and per member state, you can see there uh, the, 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 the four major NETCAD risks and, and what, what size they have per, per member state, thinking about flooding, drought, earthquakes, etc. Moreover, we feel that the access to data and models is essential to do our work, but also for industry to do its work, for society to know what they're dealing with um, and to build prevention measures. We therefore believe that open source data and models on climate related risk are crucial to improve the transparency and accuracy of climate risk assessment for industry and the supervisory community. And to highlight this importance, IOPA has developed and released last week the Climata app to facilitate the use of an open source catastrophe model, um, a framework that was developed by the University in Zurich and then enhanced by IOPA to make it user friendly and, and brought to you in an app. And again, you can find this on our website. We're also using that tool ourselves, and we will include some results of that tool in our next financial statement, uh, financial stability report. Besides clear knowledge of, of the risks and the gaps and dealing with those through adaptation for mitigation, uh, we cannot deny that there will be damages in the future that somehow need to be dealt with, and therefore we need to take measures. So the measures, first of all, is, is, is looking really at the whole industry uh, and at the whole system. It's first of all a supply side question. What can we do focusing on pricing and product design? How can we incentivize preventative measures? How can also the knowledge of, of being risk managers inform decisions on where to build, on, on how to address drought already, uh, even before we start building? Second, there is the demand side. Why do people and businesses not take insurance? What do they need to be able to take insurance? Um, and, and, and how can we uh, ensure that that is, is, is going to be done uh, more than we see it currently in order to also ensure that the private market is taking its role. And then there is the macro part. What can be done at the macro part? How can we increase the capacity of the insurance industry to deal with this risk? But also how can we strengthen society's resilience through uh, public-private measures? And this is what we discussed today in the paper. And I think Vice President De Kindles clearly listed what steps we are proposing. And, and I think these are very uh, needed steps, sensible steps that, that make the whole letter uh, of, of policy options complete. So let me conclude. Building on this work, we will continue to work closely with the ECB colleagues and identify policy options to enhance the insurance of European households and companies against climate-related catastrophes, while also creating further incentives to actually mitigate, to adapt, to reduce the damages. Whereas I would say that even if we really reduce uh, and by mitigation, we probably will see an increasing uh, number of claims. And moreover, we, I hope that this is the start of a further discussion, a broader discussion on how at an EU level, we can also find ways to deal with the risks when they are becoming systemic and when they are also too much for only an insurance sector to deal with. So I thank everyone who worked on this report. I very much thank the panelists who will speak today. I look forward to the discussion, but I also very much see it as only a start for more work is to be done. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you so much, uh, thank you, uh, Chairperson Ayopa. Thanks so much, uh, Vice President uh, De Gindas, for your excellent opening remarks and setting the scene for this uh, workshop we are having today. And uh, I think, Petra, you really set out nicely the role of insurance uh, in the whole uh, spectrum of insurance protection gap. Also, the cooperation of the ECB and Ayopa together uh, on the stress testing, on, a, on this specific project, on nature-related risk, and also I think how we complement each other's work. So what the work that the ECB is doing on financial stability front with the stress testing in our own operations, on the supervisory side, on our macroeconomic models. And this, if I have one message for everyone today, I think we all have to pick up our piece of the puzzle for fixing this and working together, finding solutions uh, this is, I think, the key message and discuss what we can do there uh, at that front. So with that, I want to thank both of you so much for being here and uh, wishing you a very nice day and 
happy there to invite the next panelist. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day.